today we're putting this under there. So coming up underneath the vehicle, the removal is pretty straightforward, but it does happen in phases. So the first thing that needs to be removed is this plastic front cover. And there are five bolts, all 10 millimeter. One there, one in the center, one on that end. And then one right there, there is this plastic fastener and another bolt here. And then that'll remove this front piece there. Things that you'll need is a fastener remover or a flathead screwdriver uh, to remove that. And then two different size bolts we're dealing with today is the 10 millimeter and then the larger bolts as 12 millimeter. So right now we are going to remove that front plastic piece. But I did want to say I ordered this online and it came with the wrong uh, hardware. So this one here doesn't actually work. Um, it's not the exact one that I needed. So I actually went to a Toyota website and this is the part number. And they actually sent me this with longer bolts that's gonna be required as these ones aren't long enough. So you need to make sure you have the correct hardware prior to installing because this, this is actually very heavy. So you don't wanna have the wrong bolts that won't be enough to hold it up. Now we will start with the removal. So removing the front plastic piece is pretty straightforward. Got the uh, five bolts removed as well as the one plastic fastener there, just giving you an idea of where they're located. Now the next step is to take off the actual metal skid plate and that's where we will switch to the 12 millimeter ratchet. So the first two, one here, one there, 12 millimeter, and then as you go towards the back of, you'll need uh, probably an extension to get in there uh, for your ratchet, two more 12 millimeter bolts, and then this uh, piece comes off. And there it is, this is the inside of that metal original skid plate, one bolt there, two, three, and four, just to give you an idea of where they'll be located. And again, these are the 12 millimeter, and this is what it looks like now. There are a couple of screws that, or other bolts that might need to be removed. I will let you know very shortly. So the four bolts are what needs to be removed next. One there and one back there on both sides of this bracket here. And these are actually 14 millimeters. So we started with 10, we went up to 12 millimeter, and these are the ones that are going to be used to keep the, the new skid plate in place, which are 14 millimeters. So we'll get those removed right now. I highly recommend having a partner, someone to help you with this. I'm, I'm actually taking this on by myself, which is a little harder, not impossible. But um, there's these spacers. There are these spacers that go on the inside of this, um, but it needs to fit into a circle. Uh, let's see, up here, inside of this circle there. So, and then there's like a locking washer underneath. So you wanna make sure that you'll get enough thread to start it on both sides here. And then to do that, if you're working solo, you're just gonna have to try to secure uh, these back bolts first, um, just enough to hold it for you. They'll act as your second pair of hands and then you can work on this front part here, hand tight before you go with the um, drill or whatever you have so you don't strip the threads. And there it is, four bolts. 14 millimeter secured uh, 22 pound feet of torque is the specification for the resistance. But um, overall, I'm liking it. I mean, shoot, I think it goes, uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? Go ahead and tell me in the comments below. Is this a good uh, upgrade to the stock skid plate? 
Thank you all for watching. This is Ryan from Riding in Style.